Hello, and welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Delora. We're back. What's going on? Girl, a lot. Um, I'm going to start us off on a bit of a somber note. Recap Nation can pray for my family, my dad's side, the Brickens. We lost our beloved Antoinette. Um, completely unexpected. It's uh, It's pretty heavy, Ashley. And I just feel like I've been moving through water sometimes like (laughs) it's been a a week now but I just want to say I love you to Janelle and Janice so 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 much and y'all are in my heart and on my mind constantly and the same to my dad and my uncles and aunties because it's um it's a lot you know it's a lot I'm so sorry to hear about the loss and we'll definitely be keeping your family lifted with prayers and great energy being sent your way. So appreciate you sharing that with us and recap nation. So guys, it's Thursday and you know what that means. Our usual pop culture episode. We got to get into some things that have been going on in these streets. And, you know, I realized that's starting to include just, big social media moments in general because Absolutely. we definitely got to talk about this Alabama sweet tea party as a part of today's episode like there's just no way we you can't. mean the battle of Montgomery the battle of Montgomery the Alabama sweet tea party the brawl heard around the world the, the um, house brawl girl the revival of the white folding chair um the black cap pitched Bad around America signal. Like I just, yep, the bat signal, like so many things um, we'll have to get into today. But let's start with some baby news. Sierra and Russell Wilson are expecting baby Quattro, right? She already has one with Future. (laughs) And now this is the third for the two of them together, even though I consider it to be their fourth child together. Because, you know, same little Future is, he's like, not to be disrespectful, but he's definitely close to Russell. You know what I'm saying? No shade. Listen. To listen. your daddy. No shade And to Russell daddy. is doing what needs to be done. He is a father figure to young future. So, And you know story. what's funny is when I saw this announcement, first of all, I love the way she announced it, which was the video and the silhouette yes. and yes. the line from the song, which if y'all have not seen that video on her Chris Brown dancing, mm-hmm. like, yep. Damn. But you know what I was thinking? I said, oh, remember that dress everybody hated on because they felt like it was too revealing for her to be wearing? That's when he got her pregnant. That's the night. Pretty much. He said, y'all upset. I slid her so out that dress. (laughs) (laughs) That is what we were talking about. Everybody's like, her husband, her husband, her husband's like, we're having baby number four to nine. (laughs) Yes. I always think of Diddy when he and Jennifer Lopez were dating and she had that infamous Oh, uh, yes. Versace dress. at the Grammys. And he was like, I don't know how long it took her to get ready, but I know it ain't taking no time to get her out of it. That's what I always think of. Like, these looks, these y'all don't think they partners are just as like, oh, my God. Exactly. And honestly, she probably wore the outfit because she knew she was going to get pregnant again. It's like, let me get my hurrah in. <laughs> and also, she's just a beautiful yes. woman. Yes. Right? She's just mm-hmm. a beautiful woman celebrating that sexiness, that body, oddy, oddy. So congratulations. I love this couple. Congratulations, Russell and Sierra. I love them too. So excited. Baby Quattro. All right, Delora, let's move on to our next headline, which, ugh, I saw this as like an alert on my phone and I was like, wait, what? 
Sandra Bullock's longtime partner, Brian Randall, has passed away at the age of 57 after a private three-year battle with ALS. Mm. First of all, when I saw this, all I saw was Sandra Bullock's partner. And I'm like, he better not have died. Like, how? How did he die? Yeah. Yeah. He kept this completely secret from the public, which obviously is his right. But it broke my heart because we've been on Sandra Bullock's journey, right? We we've have. been watching Sandra Bullock for a long time. So that mess she had to go through in her previous marriage. Girl. I remember when I saw her getting with this guy and everything seemed good and stable. I said, oh, good for you. She was I'm on so happy table for you. talk calling him her soulmate. Said I have found the love of my life, right? So to not know that this was going on and he was battling this privately is just heartbreaking. And ALS, you know, I know it gained more popularity during that ice bucket challenge and all of yes. that. But I mean, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, you know, really has been more prominent for me since Stephen Hawking and realizing that was what his ailment yes. was and all of that. And it's just one of those that, diseases that just I, I absolutely hate. And I hope that they find a cure for it sooner rather than later. So that just broke my heart to think about what he would have gone through these last three years, him, his caretakers, his family um, and loved ones. So definitely RIP to Brian Randall. What were you thinking when you caught this news? Again, Sandra Bullock is one of our favorite actresses she is beloved and endeared for a reason and for her to go through this type of loss just so saddened for her and her family so I honestly didn't know that much about him like I knew he was the handsome guy on her arm very um, handsome but very handsome right uh, but for her to gush over him the way she had um in the interview with Jada and um I I was like oh so this man is special so to hear this is just it just saddens me especially because she finally found happiness we knew what she had to go through before him so praying for her and her family during this this terrible loss for sure absolutely all right our next headline Wayne Brady has come out as pan sexual an exclusive interview with people he said i'm doing this for me he opened up about his long road to self-discovery and how his daughter and ex-wife are showing him acceptance he said i love all people equally and now that includes myself delora when this came out i think it was one of those that i think often about people revealing things about their personal selves but especially their sexuality is like what propelled you to announce it publicly and in getting a chance to read some of this article via people he said things along the lines of like he kind of just wanted to speak his truth out loud right like it's not that he necessarily just had to but I think he felt that he was not being fully himself fully truthful doing what he wanted to do if he continued to keep this to himself and the support in this interview that I see from his family like his ex-wife was like I'm just happy for you because I know you're gonna live your best life now his daughter was like you know shrug okay great you know that's awesome smile um whatever makes you happy so I love this because you know Wayne Brady is 51 years old mm -hmm. has been in our lives for so long Many We've years. known him as this comedian, as this show host, as this kind of consummate entertainer performer. Yep. Um, but I didn't know a whole lot about his personal life in any type of way. And so to see him moving into a space where he's sharing something that I'm sure is going to be so helpful for other people and so helpful for him, I was just, I just loved it. I was so happy to read it. And then I also, as a part of this People article, read that him and his family are actually filming a reality series that's going to premiere on Hulu next year. So I was like, oh, well, in that case, obviously people are going to get even more about this journey that he's currently on. So what'd you think about this announcement from Wayne? Well, I thought it was unexpected, but ultimately I felt like, you know, good for him. If this is something that he needs to do in this life journey for him, I'm glad he felt free enough to share with the public. I also think it like shows, hopefully again, that we're moving towards a different era 
um, and that doing these sorts of things and making these sorts of announcements are not career enders in the way that they once were when you announce certain things within the public eye. Like the controversy over Ellen when she first came out as gay is yep. something that's still Major. talked about to this day, right? So yep. the fact that he's someone who has, has such longevity in the industry and it feels comfortable with revealing these truths to me, again, just points to hopefully we're moving in a better direction um, in terms of, um, you know, accepting people as they are. Absolutely. All right, Delora, let's move on to our last headline. This Jamie Foxx, Jen Aniston controversy that went down over the weekend. So I actually took a social media break over the weekend. I was off social for three days. And so when I came back, these are two of the things that I came back to. This Jamie Foxx, Jen Aniston situation, and then the Alabama sweet tea party, right? So the Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Aniston situation basically started from an Instagram post that Jamie did that was considered to be anti-Semitic. He posted to her. about, well, to the some of the public, not just Some to of her. the public. Some Correct. of the public saw it as anti-Semitic. He posted on his Instagram, they killed this dude named Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? And he did hashtag fake friends, hashtag fake love. And so right. there was a criticism from a newsletter that focuses on issues affecting the Jewish community. And I'm referencing a today.com article, by the way, called wider frame. And they basically said that his statement was anti-Semitic because it echoed an anti-Semitic trope that insists that Jews are collectively responsible for the killing of Jesus. Now in the black community, we use they all the time. <laughs> we, but not even just they, we use this phrase about religion and life in a different way than it was perceived culturally yes. you saw a lot of folks coming to jamie's defense on social media right like one commenter said any black person growing up in the south will tell you that jamie fox wasn't referring to jewish people no, they he was killed slash lied on talked about jesus simply means if jesus can be betrayed so you can, can you. too Yes. He genuinely meant fake friends, fake people, so quick to reach. It's ridiculous. So two sides of the coin, right? You have the people who understand, obviously, where he's coming from. You have the people who feel like it's anti-Semitic. Jen Anderson gets involved in this because people noted that she had liked the post. And so she was dragged for that. And so she posted in response, essentially, this really makes me sick. I did not like this post on purpose or by accident. And more importantly, I want to be clear to my friends and anyone hurt by this showing up in their feeds. I do not support any form of anti-Semitism and I truly don't tolerate hate of any kind, period. Jamie Foxx also issued a response on social media saying he apologized to the Jewish community and anyone offended. He, again, clarifying that what he meant was talking about being betrayed by a fake friend and that he loves and supports the Jewish community. Delora, you grew up in a church. I grew up in a church. We obviously knew what Jamie meant by his posting. But what did you think about the hoopla surrounding it? And do you feel like he should have, because one, one thing I've heard people talk about, do you feel like he really should have apologized versus simply clarifying what he ultimately meant? I feel like Jen Anderson chose violence <laughs> that day. I feel like... You know how, what's that saying? Like, don't get in the Kool-Aid if you don't know the flavor. Mm. I feel like she is the poster child of that statement at this time. Now, we love everybody. And so what I am saying is coming from the Black perspective, the African-American perspective. What Jamie Foxx posted is something, to your point, we hear all the time. Is pretty much saying that you're not special because our Lord and Savior was betrayed and killed for who he was or who he is during his time on earth. When I saw it, I was just thinking, oh, he's just talking about a bunch of Judases. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People, fake friends, people who is in your crew, your 12 disciples, and will rent you out for a coin or less mm -hmm. than that. So, that was my understanding of that statement. Should he have apologized? I think I appreciated he apologized because it proves how much he cares about the people who were offended by that statement. 
Um, but I think there could be some merit in him not apologizing as well based off of his true intentions, but he's a public figure. So it's always important to be mindful of what you say. Obviously intention is everything, but words are still words. I think one of the biggest disservices we receive as kids is that saying that stick and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's an absolute lie from the pit of hell because words will <laughs> stick with you for the Forever. rest of your life. Yeah. And they are lethal and dangerous. That's why the Bible, speaking of the Bible, life and death is in the power of the tongue. I just misquoted it because it usually says death and life is the power of tongue, but you understand what I'm trying to say. And even if you don't always remember what someone said, you remember the way they made you feel. Okay, Maya, the doctor Maya Angelou says that. I actually have this quote on my wall. I look at it every day. It says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's that on that. So again, I came into this late and I immediately thought like Jamie Foxx just recovered from possibly a life-threatening stress health yes. situation. <laughs> How did something like this go down about him right now? Like, let that man continue to recuperate. Now, I did listen to Higher Learning's episode with a rabbi who spoke about the history of why this would have been taken the way that it would have been taken by certain folks within the Jewish community. And I appreciated that history because I do think sometimes social media gives you a knee jerk reaction, which I think was Jennifer Aniston's reaction. Like, I, I think that you should have sat with this a little bit. I think you should have connected with Jamie if y'all are supposedly friends, friends or at least associates within the industry, whatever, because it could be seen as like a pile on and a, I just need to move my remove myself from this as quickly as possible to not let it taint my image um, and kind of throw him under the bus a little bit. So I think it was important to step back and consider the Jewish perspective for sure and those who are offended. And also think it's important sometimes for people to not have such knee jerk reactions to something to your point without understanding the intention. Like you don't understand culturally what that statement and what that sentiment he was saying meant in the African-American community, you just immediately said, oh, we're attacking you. Like, it's not black and white as a white person saying the N-word or something that you know right. outright is wrong and culturally offensive. Like, and not to say it's impossible for Jamie Foxx to have known how this would be taken, but obviously this was not a black and white, I know exactly what I'm doing when I post this out here that it's going to offend somebody type of moment. So I, I just think it's always important for people to take a step back to not always feed into what people are saying on social media, feeding into the comments, jumping into kind of that hurt mentality of being like, oh, this is anti-Semitic. This is anti, this is anti that. Like, I think it's great that he apologized. I heard they said on the podcast also that he actually called his friends within the Jewish community he knows to directly apologize as well. And that just shows his character, obviously. But yes. I think it will it'll go a long way to give people a longer leash and to have more understanding um, towards where other people are coming from. So that was my biggest thought surrounding this whole situation, Delora. What I need from you is understanding. Okay. Uh, uh, escape. Um <laughs> And that's really that on that. Now, do you think Jennifer Aniston is going to have a stain on her from the Black community because of her response moving forward? I think she'll be getting a side eye. I think she would be <laughs> She's joined a list. Like Jennifer Gardner. Did you see uh, the video that has been unearthed? Apparently, there was a dinner full of Hollywood stars and Regina King was talking about being from LA and loving LA. And then Jennifer Gardner's like, but where you're really from? Where are your ancestors from? And we're like, mm, sis, what are you trying to get at? You got too comfortable. You got too comfortable. Too comfortable. And then, and ugh, yeah. And I typically love Jennifer Gardner. Um, and her fake cooking show on Instagram. But I'm like, <laughs> if you're out here acting like that, you know what? It, again, I find it very difficult for white people not to understand asking a black person where they're really from, how 
that sensitive subject. Now, there's a lot of assumptions to come into play, right? And obviously not every Black person, we're all from the diaspora, right? So some Black people do know exactly where they come from, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But in here in these new United States, like Regina answered your question, uh, probably somewhere from West Africa, but my people came from the South and moved to the North and out West. Shout out to the great migration. You know what I mean? That's a painful journey there. And that question was completely unnecessary. And it's like, bitch, where are you from? Iowa? Like, <laughs> <laughs> where are you really from? I was going to say, wanna... cause let's not trace back your roots. And then you got them slave owner ties. So that would be a problem. So Ooh, Chile. I, I mean, there are, there are bigger grievances. There are bigger offenses from, you know, white people that are you know in the public eye that have happened so I don't I don't want to get into the who's on this list who's on that list for me right now but I will say that this was a check mark in the wrong direction for Jennifer Aniston so it's be careful a yellow flag a yellow flag yeah be <laughs> careful that's all I'll say tread lightly um all right Delora let's move into these hot 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 topics our first one I mean off the gate brought it up White folding chair, get you a t-shirt, bat signal hat in the air. What'd you call him? Michael B. Phelps. We have Little Mermaid. We have Snoop Doggy Dog Pedal. We have <laughs> Jingle Unashamed. I'll be sure. I'll be sure. Baby Shark. Apollo Creek. Apollo Creek. Guys, y'all know what we're talking about. We're talking about this Alabama brawl. That the Battle of Montgomery. It just is all over these social media pages. And you know, the biggest thing that I thought about when I was really catching up on everything is we really have a one sense of humor because the fact that we Girl. so quickly turn this into jokes and banter and t-shirts and nicknames for something that could have been truly traumatic and traumatizing. Girl, listen. Shows the power of the culture. <laughs> it's someone who said this is more Juneteenth than Juneteenth is. August 5th. Okay. The day to be remembered. So you probably caught this live, right? When Ish was first popping off and going down. So I'm, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Tell me about your thoughts on the Montgomery Riverfront brawl. So when I first started seeing people talk about it, I avoided it. Because I personally do not enjoy violent videos. I avoid them at all costs at these these days but then when I started hearing like the story behind it and when I saw the first video of like how it started and how those boaters started jumping that one man who was just trying to do his job I was like okay I need to know more about this story there were two significant moments in that video that made me go all the way in the first being when my dude threw the hat up in the air like well if i'm gonna lose we my go. job today <laughs> here we go it's gonna be worth it right and then when you see like eight on one and i'm like they are really trying to kill this man they could kill this man they and could've. when i start when i saw that young man in that water the fade in the water i was like I, it actually made me emotional because I'm like, what Black people are tired of, they are tired of seeing the abuse of one another by the hands of white people with zero accountability. So, you know, people are like, oh, you're, you're laughing over violence and all this and the other. First of all, America has been built on violence. Black people have seen violence firsthand since we've been on these shores, okay? And this is one of the very few times that we were able to fight back and no one ended up dead. So yep. yes, 
we are going to remember this day and we're going to rejoice because what it also shows is that together we could do so much. Like we talked about this in our conversation with Nicole, where we are very aware when we're the only black people in the room, because we're hopefully able to identify like, okay, if stuff goes down, I'm not going to be by myself. Yes, there is a sense of a lack of safety when you are not able to have other Black folks in your very immediate vicinity. Ashley, I need to know your thoughts on it. So let me get, let me reference the CNN article real quick that gave even more context. Again, I, I've caught up on all the videos now because I kept thinking, where's the chair video? That was, that was on the, that was two separate big fights that happened at once. Yes. Yeah. So when I finally saw the chair, I was like, oh, wow. So we got down, down at this particular brawl, right? And the CNN article says that witnesses say that racist language was used prior to the assault, which to me, based on the videos, Duh. makes total sense, <laughs> right? Like they said, They're the mother of one of the victims. Alabama. Exactly. Of course they threw that around. The mother of one of the victims said that you could hear men yelling, F that. You know, in word, as the black co-captain of the riverboat tried to move a pontoon boat occupying the riverboat's docking location. Because you could see him agitated. Like, you during that initial talk, you could see the agitation. You could see it was not a good conversation. Because this man, let me give y'all some context for anybody who somehow is not familiar with the videos and what happened. He Mm. was the co-captain of a riverboat that was out on the water. And they have a designated spot they needed to get back to at the dock. They were out there for 45 minutes calling out trying to get this boat to move and these folks on this boat would not move they were cursing at them saying all sorts of stuff to them and were refused to move so the co-captain and a, a white boy who unfortunately got caught up in it and got his ass whooped so sorry to that man or a child rather um <clears throat> took a boat over to move this boat themselves so that you know these folks all these folks who were on this river boat could get off and dock and all of that. Yes. So at the point when that happens and he gets confronted and then you see him get shoved and you see him start to get jumped, it was like this visceral feeling of like, oh my God, not again. The fact that y'all thought it was okay to all try to pile on to this one man who was simply doing his, his job. job. It's the lack of respect for me. Like they didn't respect him at all. Such a lack of respect, but not just a lack of respect uh, for him, a lack of respect for the situation at hand, which is you do not have the privilege to determine what the rules are. If I tell you to Mm. move your fucking boat because I need to pull this group of people, which I'm sure this riverboat goes back and forth multiple trips throughout the day, just like any tourist place you go to. You can hop on a boat, you can hop on a helicopter, you know, all these things, you know that those those spots exist you need to move exactly the fact that you thought took it within yourself to think you were going to be an exception is utterly wild to me right i watched this video multiple times from multiple angles and i as we always talk about do not condone violence was not excited to see this it made me sad to think that we had to all come together to protect this black man and protect our lives but they did what needed to be done and the police, hopefully, based on at least a CNN article, are going to do what they need to do. Like they're investigating this is potentially a hate crime or inciting a riot. Um, I hope that the black folks who are a part of this are excused as this was self-defense. This was us doing what we needed to do to de-escalate this situation. Because yep. to say that those white men, once it started going down, had became subdued is a lie. They were ready the entire time even the women who jumped into that oh y'all are ready right so to me it was never de-escalated to the point where I could be like well you know we just broke up the fight and it was over they seemed ready the whole time to me so I hope that the black folks who are involved get excused with self-defense I hope that these uh white folks who are involved get penalized to whatever degree that is possible under the law Because these sorts of incidents need to be discouraged with real consequences. The ass whooping is not enough to me. Okay? Y'all need to be discouraged with real consequences. Especially because, Delora, after seeing so much internet hoopla, it made me Mm -hmm. worried. It made me concerned 
for our safety? Is there going to be some type of retaliatory attack? 1,000%. You know, again, after everything that has come out and for the fight to have been what it was, I'm thankful no one brought out a gun. Yes, and that's supposedly what one of the men uttered, that he was about to go get his gun, and that's when he got knocked down by somebody else. That's what I'm saying. Like, to say that, like, oh, they should just gone and broke this up. Those men chose violence over and over and over again. Not just those men, those people. Like I said, there were some women who wanted to get their asses whooped, too. Yep. They chose violence repeatedly. So there was never an opportunity, in my opinion, to de-escalate, because they were ready. So... Do what y'all need to do to discourage this from happening again. I was very concerned on everybody getting that young man's name out on the internet. I'm like, no, protect that young man, the one who got in the water. Because he didn't even show up to fight. He showed up to be like, okay, you ain't going to be by yourself. I said this to you offline. I was like, that co-captain had a praying grandmama because he could have died by the hands of all those men that jumped him. He could have broken his neck, his back. And what? That would have been another video of a black man dying on, te- not not today. That's a, that's another thing. We the people, the black folk of America, we tired of watching our own die on, t- on camera. If there is something this, we can do about it, we're going to do something about it. This We did not want to see this be another George Floyd situation or anything like that where we had to collectively mourn and pray that we could somehow, because to say that we have repeated PTSD to say we have repeated like mental health struggles from all these incidents and situations we see is so real and you won't understand it unless you walk in our shoes and can fully understand even after seeing this that day Delora an audience I'm be honest with y'all it was uncomfortable being around white people for the rest of the day for me because I wondered how many people have seen this video how many people are feeling some type of way Do I need to be more on guard for my general safety because racial tensions could be escalated right now? You live in fucking Florida. (laughs) I live in Florida. So I'm going to be honest with y'all. I felt uncomfortable for the rest of the day. So I can only imagine how the people in Montgomery, Alabama were feeling after this incident, how other black people around the nation, again, just watching this and absorbing it and having to see it felt like, again, I know we make jokes. And we make light and we do all this stuff, but that's, there's still a lot of pain, right? There's still so much pain that we have to deal with when we see situations and scenarios where we are put in harm's way and in violent situations. So I'm so thankful that this did not go the way that it has so many other times. He was not run down and gunned down after jogging through his neighborhood. He was not choked out on camera for the world to see this man survived so did all these other black folks and i'm so thankful for that amen let's move on to our final hot topic of the day tory langs has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for the shooting of megan b stallion tory had pleaded not guilty to charges of Assault with a semi-automatic firearm, carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharge of a firearm with gross negligence. And the jury convicted him on all three counts. Delora, was this deserved or was this, to some people's thoughts, an over-sentencing? To me, judge, jury did what needed to be done. I'm not sorry for that, man. Like... You don't care about the litigating, the sentencing in the court of public opinion. Because he has been acting the fool the entire time. And it's like, guilty as fuck. And now you're getting what's coming to you. Karma's a bitch, ain't it? It goes around, goes around, goes around, goes around. I believe, uh, you know, parole is probably still possibility for good behavior and all those, those things for people who are upset that he got 10 years and feel like that's a harsh punishment for the crime itself but to your point because of all the additional emotional manipulation and turmoil that I feel like went into this case and went into this hoopla overall because let's be honest this was such a huge story when all this stuff was going down right from the shooting itself to the courtroom and the case and all of that 
I'm just, I guess when it came out, I didn't even feel much emotion because I was like, well, it's a wrap. I think I literally said that like on our post, like that's a wrap. Like it's kind of the end of this prolonged conversation and we have some level of justice for Megan and for the situation to happen. Whether 10 years is appropriate or not, bro, like I don't have super strong feelings about that. Like I I know that- He's a black man and he's going into the system and people get way less sentencing for way harsher crimes and all these various things that people talk about and comment on. I get that, but it is what it is in this case for me. Like it is what it is. I don't, I'm not, a. I was never a Tory Lanez fan. I'm damn sure not now. And I think that there needs to be some reflection on his part about what happened. Girl, are we going to get some, that though? accountability on his part for what happened and maybe sitting in prison will aid in that maybe i don't know because his daddy made him look real guilty that day you remember he was out there (laughs) oh talking about jay-z and rock nation i'm like y'all are showing y'all entire behinds now like like i know my i know everybody is not like their family but it said a lot it it said a lot right exactly bye yay megan hopefully megan can go on everybody's like well i don't trust her blah 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 do confessed it on tape in a conversation with her friend i've never not believed megan i think that's a big thing to clarify same on the mic i've never there's never been a question in my mind as to what actually happened right it was just a matter of unfortunately it became this big spectacle it turned into so much he said she said but i i want everybody to be able to move on from this move on with their lives not just them but like the public like that's why i said like it feels like the closure on this particular situation that was so hyped up that was so crazy and chaotic when everything was going on and to be honest pitted in my opinion on social media at least black men against black women and i hate to see that absolutely i'm looking at you drake you still getting a side eye too oh yeah i forgot about that in his one song yeah unnecessary let's remember the camaraderie that we felt from the sweet tea party and let's let this situation be resolved so that's it that's all and that's all for us today kids we got to get out of here We've been, we've been on this mic for a little bit <laughs> today. So yes, we have, we're going to hop out, but Delora, before we do, what do we have special for the people next week? Well, Ashley, I'm so excited. We are recapping one of the hits of the summer, the blackening, and we have a special guest. Erica Gray. So y'all please check out that recap. It's going to be available next Tuesday. It's a lot of fun and very black. I might add. <laughs> <laughs> very black. Uh, thank you again so much, Erica, for joining us for that conversation, thank you, thank you, guys. We you. look forward to you getting a chance to check it out. And if you haven't seen the blackening, it is available on Amazon prime right now to rent and stream. So as usual, We appreciate y'all for joining us, for sticking with us. Share this episode with everybody you love, everybody you like, and people you're indifferent about, okay? Because we need need y'all to uh, (laughs) continue to help promote what we're doing here. So we appreciate it, and we will see you next time. In the meantime, be blessed. Bye.